Hi, everyone. I'm Vladimir Dutit, watching all the news happening in the United States and around the world. Check out these monitors behind me. These are feeds coming into the CBS News Broadcast Center from all of our stations and affiliates across the country. If it's happening out here and out there, we're going to bring it to you right here. Let's begin. A vaccine skeptic and known conspiracy theorist has been tapped to lead the Department of Health and Human Services. We'll discuss the president-elect latest controversial pick and the reaction pouring in from Washington. The trial for the man accused of killing 22-year-old nursing student Lakin Riley begins this morning. We're live outside the courthouse as opening arguments begin. Plus, extreme turbulence forced a U.S.-bound flight to turn around what we know about the terrifying moments on board. This is CBS News 24-7. We begin with the first full week of the Trump transition in Washington. The president-elect is filling out more spots in his administration. He named well-known vaccine skeptic Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as Health and Human Services Secretary and tapped South Dakota Governor Doug Burgum as Secretary of the Interior. But there is even more controversy surrounding his pick for defense secretary. Vanity Fair was first to report that it's not Seth. It's uh, Pete. Pete Hegseth was uh, investigated for an alleged sexual assault in October of 2017. Hegseth's lawyer said that the allegation was, quote, investigated by the Monterey Police Department, and they found no evidence for it. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns is in West Palm Beach and joins us now. Caitlin, uh, break down these allegations and how the campaign's responding to them. Hey, Vlad, good to see you. Yes, this pertains to Pete Hegseth, who has been nominated for defense secretary. These are allegations made in 2017, and we're hearing from the campaign, or I should say the transition team now. It's the transition. Here's a look at some of the top stories we're following for you. Alex Jones is going to court to stop the sale of InfoWars. Yesterday, we learned that the satirical website The Onion purchased the company. InfoWars was put up for auction after a judge ordered Jones to pay a $1.5 billion settlement to the families of the Sandy Hook school shooting victims. They sued Jones for repeatedly claiming the tragedy was a hoax. Jones and his lawyers have raised questions about how the sale was conducted, and a judge has agreed to hold a hearing. Federal officials say they stopped a Houston man from carrying out a 9-11-style attack in the U.S. The FBI arrested 28-year-old Anas Saeed last week. He was charged with attempting to provide material support to ISIS. Prosecutors, according to them, say he spent time planning and discussing his efforts to commit attacks and offered his home as a safe sanctuary for ISIS members. Police say several arrests were made after an altercation at a soccer match between France and Israel. There was a brief fight in the stands after the game began, but it was quickly ended. Thousands of police had been deployed to Paris and security was heightened around the stadium in the wake of those violent attacks against Israeli fans at a match in Amsterdam last week. President Biden is in Peru today at the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit, or APEC. He's got some high profile meetings with world leaders on the agenda, but his conversation with his Chinese counterpart tomorrow seems to be generating the most interest. CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand is in Lima and joins us now. Uh, all right, Natalie, break down the agenda for the president today. Vlad, good to be with you from Lima. Well, this is President Biden's first day at the APEC summit, which is a mix, as you know, of uh, leaders of Asia Pacific countries and economies, as well as business leaders. Later this morning, President Biden expected uh, to have a trilateral meeting with uh, the president of South Korea, the new prime minister of Japan. This will be the first uh, in-person meeting between President Biden and Japan's uh, new leader. Uh, so that's significant. North Korea expected uh, to be on the agenda during that meeting. And uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan uh, noting on the way over here that during periods of transition from president to president, uh, that is historically a time when North Korea uh, may be looking to uh, do some provocative action. So they're on guard for that, uh, talking with allies about how to uh, handle, you know, various threats. And then also talking about uh, the recent developments of North Korean soldiers uh, being in Russia and making sure allies are on the same page uh, in terms of a coordinated uh, 
diplomatic and policy position on that front. Uh, President Biden also expected to meet today with Peru's president, uh, where counter-narcotics is expected to be one of the big items on the agenda there, Vlad. Uh, so let's talk, uh, Natalie, about that uh, meeting with uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping tomorrow. Uh, the, the, the feeling, of course, is that uh, it's, he's in a lame duck period of his presidency. So can we expect anything material to come out of that discussion? Yeah, the White House has really said that this meeting... Tropical Storm Sarah. This is the 18th named storm in the Atlantic this year, and the season is almost at an end, but it is this storm moving slowly through the Western Caribbean. It's packing life-threatening winds and potentially catastrophic flash flooding after making landfall in Honduras last night. Now, Sarah's expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico next week, but then forecasters say the path is less clear. So let's bring in CBS News Philadelphia meteorologist Kate Bilo with another look at the national forecast. Kate, what can you tell us? Well, Vlad, we are watching Sarah very closely. The latest track actually has Sarah weakening and kind of falling apart over parts of Mexico and Central America. But we'll still have to watch at least the moisture, the remnant low associated with Sarah into next week. Because if that storm moves into the Gulf of Mexico, the water is still warm enough that it could still strengthen. Here is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see as Sarah kind of skims the northern coast of Honduras and moves over Belize and Guatemala, it'll move then through the Yucatan Peninsula. And as of now, the National Hurricane Center expects Sarah to weaken back to a remnant low and then just kind of fall apart. But it does look like at least some of that tropical moisture will get pulled toward the Gulf and possibly into the moisture-starved Northeast by the end of next week, just enhancing the chances for some rain, which would actually be not the worst thing. So we will continue to keep an eye on Sarah. Across the country for your Friday, again, we're not looking at any giant major weather problems as far as severe weather or heavy snow, but that's going to change over the weekend for the Northwest as more snow expected in the Cascades. We've got 70s across much of Oklahoma, Texas, and dry conditions up into the Midwest. Storm system that finally brought some rain to West Virginia, an area that's in an exceptional drought, is now moving off the coast. And we're seeing clearing skies across much of New England and here in Philadelphia today. But the problem, the wind is picking up. So here's your fire weather outlook all through southern New England. Through New York City, as we know, all of New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania, the fire weather is critical, elevated, I should say, for today, but will turn critical in some spots for tomorrow. And we have a couple of fire weather watches and warnings to tell you about for today. It's southern New England. It's a red flag warning. That means fire danger is imminent. Fire spread will be rapid. There's a fire weather watch for much of southern New York, down through Long Island, New Jersey, and eastern Pennsylvania for tomorrow. And here's a look at why. The winds are really going to pick up. Today, the worst of the winds are over New England, where gusts could reach 20 miles an hour. For tomorrow, we'll see those gusts exceed 20, even 25 miles an hour across much of New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. That means not only new wildfires, but increased wildfire spread as drier air moves in for the weekend. Vlad, I'll send it back over to you. All right, Kate, thank you very much. Appreciate it. 58-year-old boxing legend Mike Tyson is getting back in the ring tonight. We're going to preview his fight with social media star Jake Paul. That's coming up next. We're streaming CBS News 24-7. All right, you've been listening to the minority leader in the United States Congress, Hakeem Jeffries, uh, doing his weekly press conference. You could hear uh, earlier in uh, his response was a response to a question by our own Scott McFarlane. Uh, we're going to continue listening in to the minority leader. Uh, and uh, if he has more, it'll come to you in our 11 o'clock hour, which is coming out of San Francisco. So pause for that. We'll see you next time.